I'm Linda Darling-Hammond. I am a professor at Stanford University's School of Education. I direct the Stanford Center for Opportunity Policy in Education, uh, and I am also the chair of the California Commission on Teacher Credentialing. Over the course of many years, I have been involved in research on quality of teaching. I was myself a high school teacher when I first entered the field on school reform and on equity issues in education. And in recent years, I have been very absorbed looking at the question of what does it take to build a system that actually produces a routinely high quality and equitable educational experience for young people and produces the kinds of learners who are ready for the 21st century, who are uh, critical thinkers, problem solvers, empowered in their own learning. Uh, and uh, I've looked at systems in some states in the United States over the years, but also in countries abroad. And uh, one of the most important, I think, lessons about this is that uh, in the most effective uh, nations, places that uh, routinely do well, not only in terms of achievement, but also graduation rates and equity of outcomes uh, around the world, places like Singapore and Finland, uh, Hong Kong and others, uh, and in states that have had that kind of outcome in the United States, uh, what they do is something very different than what we've been doing in the last 10 years under No Child Left Behind. Uh, number one, they don't just see their job as disruptive innovation, starting things and experimenting and seeing what will work. Uh, in fact, we do a lot of that in the United States, sort of popcorn reform, and we don't have systems to sustain those things that work, to spread them, to replicate them, and to make sure that they become part of the rule and rather than the exception. Uh, in the high-achieving systems, we see several things that are routinely in place. Number one, they take care of children. Uh, they ensure that children are healthy, have uh, health care, and uh, places to live, and preschool, uh, early childhood care that is of high quality, uh, something that we are still struggling to put in place in most parts of the United States. They fund their schools equitably so that all students get a level playing field, and in most cases they spend more in schools that serve new immigrants or students uh, from lower income backgrounds. In the United States, it's the reverse. We have highly inequitable funding. Uh, generally, the children of the rich get richer, the children of the poor get poorer. With that level playing field, they also do a lot to build a very high quality educator workforce. Uh, all of the teachers get high quality preparation, uh, usually for free and with a subsidy while they tr while they train. And nobody has to say I can't afford to get you know that much preparation because I can't take that time off from work. Uh, they then ensure that they get high quality mentoring and induction in the schools from expert mentor teachers. Often these are teachers who are specifically prepared for that and maybe. Um, uh, have a, a role on a career ladder as a senior teacher or a mentor teacher or a master teacher. They provide time in the workday for ongoing professional development, usually 10 or 15 hours a week for teachers to plan and collaborate and learn with each other, to engage in lesson study and action research, to go into each other's classrooms and observe each other teach, and to meet individually with students and parents as needed. In contrast, in the United States, most teachers only get about three or four hours a week for individual preparation without that collaborative wraparound. So they're putting in place the kinds of systems uh, with resources, with teachers who have lots of opportunities to become knowledgeable, skillful, and continue to share and learn with each other. Uh, and then they have a curriculum that is organized around higher order thinking and performance skills. Uh, the United States is just about the only country in the world that tests as often as we do every child every year and does so with multiple choice tests that primarily measure low level skills and the ability to pick one answer out of five. In these other systems you see a rich curriculum uh, that is very full with the arts and uh, physical fitness, as well as social sciences, civics, science, 
mathematics, English language arts, multiple foreign languages. Uh, teachers typically are working around that shared national or state curriculum, which is very lean, and then they develop the real units and lesson plans themselves in teams uh, in their schools and classrooms. Uh, some of them are involved in developing materials that then are circulated and made available to other teachers to uh, adapt and borrow from for their own classrooms. And then their assessments are open-ended. There are many fewer of them. Typically, most countries do not assess students more than about once or twice before high school. Uh, and then they may have high school examinations, typically predominantly or exclusively open-ended essays and projects and problem sets, which engage students in everything from uh, analyzing information, uh, conducting scientific investigations and writing them up, really preparing for college and careers. Uh, and finally, they've organized schools in a way that supports teacher learning, educator learning, as well as student learning, uh, and uh, have really focused those schools on the kinds of innovations that are going to be needed to respond to 21st century demands. So in this country, I think our challenge is state by state, because education is a state responsibility, to figure out how to build these systems in which rather than trying to uh, you know, fire weak teachers, we are focused on preparing strong teachers, rather than trying to test kids with low level multiple choice instruments over and over again, we have much more thoughtful, expansive assessments that are used for improvement and not for punishments, and in which we put in place that level playing field, uh, the uh, equitable funding that allows uh, educators and children and families together to have the building blocks on which every child can get a real uh, opportunity to learn uh, and exercise what I think of as a true right to learn.